and we have the men's minus 58 kilogram. There it is on your screen. Quarterfinals and semi-finals. Uh, we've got about four minutes to go. There's a lot of um, new athletes coming through. And if you are new to the sport, you'll also get a feel for the rules. It's kicking and punching, organized mayhem, and points make prizes. So that will become clear to you as you go along and sure. the judges are on the map. So here we go. This is the first bout. We've got 12 bouts to bring you over the next three hours. I'm really looking forward to it. I always love quarters and semis. You know, you always got good fighters against other good fighters. And our first one up, um, to be honest, there's none better than this lady walking on in blue, Lucia Zaninovic of Croatia, won the European Championships in 2010, 2012. There she is on your screen, 2014. Bronze at the Olympic Games. John, she's an absolute talent, this girl. Yep, her and her twin sister, Anna, are the terrors of Taekwondo, and they're just world-class fighters, so experienced, and probably the prohibitive favorite coming into this competition. Bogdanovic herself comes from a strong Olympic stable, and you can see her there with her coach, Dragan Jovic. They've got a lot of experience. Milica Mandic was the first ever Olympic champion from Serbia, so yeah, both Serbia and Croatia looking strong in this one. Yep, these are two countries with a real pedigree in the sport. Bogdanovic, uh, this is a massive ask for her. She's only 17 years old. She just missed out at the Youth Olympic Games in Nanjing last year, finishing fifth, but she is the 2014 World Junior Champion and also the European Junior Champion. So she comes to this fight with some serious pedigree. For sure, and I think now it's time to get the game plan embedded. They've obviously practiced it backstage. I know Dragan Jovic well from the Dragon Club in Galeb, top class. And of course, here's Tony Thomas, who's presided over the success of the Croatian team. And his eyes down, look in, we're ready to go. Here we go, the first quarterfinal. We have uh, eight quarterfinals and four semifinals across the two weight categories coming up here. We're going to have three rounds of two minutes apiece. If they're still tied after that, we will have what's called a gold golden point. It used to be called sudden death, but I think uh, golden points. Too dramatic. I think yes. Changed it. Yeah, I don't think uh, golden points definitely sounds nicer. And uh, and if they're still tied after that, if nobody scores a single point in the two minutes, then we will go to uh, a computer-based decision. If that is tied, the humans decide. It's always good to leave that, <laughs> just in case you panicked there when you saw the scoreboard in the top screen. It is not 18-6, it's 0-0. And the point score, if you connect, you see the little sensor socks they've got on their feet? If you marry that up to the body armor with good contact and impact, you get a point. And if you get it upstairs to the head, that's bonus points. It's up to four points for a spinning kick to the face. But you'll get familiar with that as you're going along. Yeah, well, we should just run through it very quickly. It is one point for a punch, one point for a kick. If you can add a spin to the kick, you get two points. If it's a kick to the head, it's three. And then the ultimate, just like you nearly saw there, spinning kick to the head is four. Straight away, they're into that closed stance, just both having the same foot in front, trying to keep each other at bay. Taekwondo, all about distance. The length of your legs doesn't change, but you've got to try and, well, hope it doesn't change during the match, but you've got to keep that differential, keep your opponent at bay and they stand very close it's about flexibility now as much as covering so it's not just the hands it's got to watch for the feet and the face as well yeah now lucy in blue is the world number one she's the big favorite for this event she's won the last three europeans and, uh, she, she's an absolute class act isn't she the way she moves around she's in total control she knows exactly what she's doing it's absolutely true it's about composure and confidence in that close distance it's very hard if you're always in a, a combat situation to relax and focus on the target but i'm very impressed so far by Bogdanovic. she's cancelling out she obviously studied you know olympic bronze medalist world champion you have it you have a look at them you, you study their form and bogdanovic is causing as many problems here for zaninovic as we get into the dying phase of the first round decent one for both yes uh well she may be giving 10 years to her opponent uh, zaninovic is 27 years old five foot seven they're both the same height at five foot seven or 170 centimeters but uh 17 years old like when you think back to when you used to compete you still had a lot to learn when you were 17, didn't you? 17 years old, you're, you're just a baby in the sport, you're just learning, and 
the biggest thing that you get over time is obviously experience, and this is probably the one of most experienced, other than Wu Jing Yu, the Olympic champion in that category. So fair play to Bogdanovic. However, she does have that mentor in Milica Mandic, Olympic champion, and I know Dragon well, the coach, and he's all about mental preparation. So you've got to set aside the fact that the person's older or more experienced, two arms, two legs, one heart, and one ambition at this moment. Yeah. Both coaches still, uh, they're looking quite uh, animated there. I think both coaches honestly believe that their, their fighter is going to win this match. And uh, Bogdanovic, for 17 years old, is actually world number 10, which is shows that she's had some very solid results on the tour. She actually was a junior world champion when, in her own right, so trying to transfer it into the senior ranks. And of course, you can transfer the points from Baku to Rio, this of course important on the Olympic qualification hunt. That'll be more present to Zan Zananovic than it will be to the lady in red. Boganovic here tries a little hook on the inside, she did, but was it after Calio? Was it after the referee said stop? Yeah, it was indeed. So it's back to 0 0. And yes, the. Uh, yes, he's, he's given a Kyungo as well, which is basically a yellow card. And uh, just to explain the situation, two Kyungos means you get a red and your opponent will get a point. And if, you, you, if you've been a pretty naughty boy or girl throughout the whole match and you actually develop, you actually earn five red cards, you are disqualified. So there is an upper limit. Uh, we're not going to see yellow cards going across the hall at the top of the screen through the match. There will be a stop at five reds. Although it could prove important down the stretch that the Kyungos, Adrian, because it's hard to score on the way through. They're both very adept at covering. They're providing a very small target. And as we said, the sensors are on the bottom of the feet and on the inset. You've got to measure that up and match that up to the body protector. Yeah. But the arms are in the way and they're very, very adept at covering, such has been the case so far. A bit of a stalemate, understandable in a quarterfinal. Good turning kick to the body there, though, from Bogdanovic. Nails it under the guard. 1-0 to the serve. She gets the first point. I did read uh, some of the reports, the international press watching the London 2012 games, and it was likened to chess and fighting at the same time, because the tactical, a lot of it is in the head. And some of the tactics used, you've got to try and draw your opponent in, see a weakness. At the moment, it, it's been a little bit of a stalemate in this, in this match. Well, that's understandable it's, when there's so much coverage, they've got all the intel, they know the game plan, but it's who has the presence and the confidence to do it. You see their back kick attempt there from Zaninovic. And she's not getting it all of her own way. She's used to leading from the front. And at the moment, she's having to claw her way back. And in any fight, you have to bridge that gap and walk into the danger zone. That's going to play into the hands and feet of the serve. Absolutely. Well, an interesting point. I was chatting to one of the British athletes. I uh, did a media day a couple of days ago and some interviews. And an athlete who I won't name, because it was a little bit off the record, it wasn't a formal interview, um, did say to me that uh, you know he's at the top of his game. Um, so that cuts down by 50%. It could be, oh, but you're, you're a thin icy agent. <laughs> but basically, he was saying that he, you know, he's very aware that a lot of the other athletes are all watching videos. They're all knowing that they're going to be facing him yeah. at some stage, and will analyse every. And you know, he's not able to do that against everybody. So now some of these athletes are at the top of the tree. They're finding that they're being analysed, and there's no doubt that this draw was known about three days ago. Yeah. And the Serbian athlete here will have will have looked at the draw and said, right, if I get through my first, I'm going to have. You know, this is the likely stopper. It's as much as that is known about the draw, but also growing up. I mean, Bogdanovic here will have studied and admired Zaninovic. You know, the, the young Serbian looking in the same category. Zaninovic is, is a hero um, yeah. throughout the sport, so they're very comfortable with it. But the most important thing, you can have the intel, you can have the plan. You've got to have the confidence to execute it. Absolutely, job. Well, we are on the verge of what could be a major shock here at the Crystal Hall, number three here in Baku, Azerbaijan, as Lucia Zaninovic, 1-0 down. The world number one, the outstanding favourite. The leader coach in the background already shouting for Kyungo as he's trying to influence the passes of play. Yeah. He knows how important that Kyungo would be with keeping things up. Oh, she's going to get it for she's going to get it. Well, there's one against Zaninovic, but there's also going to be one against Serbia. And that gives a point to Zaninovic. Of course, there is an automatic. This is one of the other little rule changes. We always have to do housekeeping at the start of a session, John. But one of the other rule changes, if you haven't seen Taekwondo since the games, 
is that the Kyungos are given automatically now for an athlete going down, and that's based on the fact, John, that it's you know it's seen as a weak move. But I mean, you, you can't be just defending all the time. You, the point of the martial art is to fight. It is a martial art plus a combat sport, and the element that people like from combat is the, the flying feet and fists. And if you're lying on the mat, that can't happen. Yeah. Here we get business end of this first quarter final here in the female minus 48 kilogram category. And the world number one in blue has got a job on here against the young Serbian. That was a good kick. That could have so easily scored. Yeah, lovely roundhouse to the flank there of Bogdanovic. Well covered. This one could be on the verge of sudden death. Adrian, this is a, a real tight tussle. But again, it's about concentration down the stretch. Fascinating. The pressure now on the last 30 seconds. Both athletes will be very aware that one one score might be enough to win or lose this match. Like not making a mistake at this stage, conserving and preserving. Do you go now? Do you wait? Sudden death or take the decision yourself? Yeah. Ten seconds to go. The pressure is immense out there. Who's going to make the move? Well, it is Bogdanovic. Oh. Pops it under the guard there, Adrian. Incredible. And what a shot we've got. The world number one is out of this event. And that has opened it up for the rest of the field. Absolutely incredible work there. Diana Bogdanovic, 17-year-old from Serbia. She was so composed, so calm all the way through, Adrian. You called it yourself, you said, will it be a mistake? Will it be a, a moment of magic? But it was Bogdanovic that found the gap and made the telling point. That was incredible. And, and that was actually a really good example. It was almost a stealth kick. You, yeah. you almost didn't see the kick come in. But there we go. There's the score. Bogdanovic, the 17-year-old from Serbia, has beaten the world number one. Well, this, of course, the tail of the tape. Zaninovic, really strong, really good at focusing and concentrating on it, but I've got to admire the intensity of Bogdanovic. She put her under pressure the whole time. She didn't let up, and that, you know, 